So Glaceon is literally never used competitively, and while its stats look pretty decent, especially with that solid base 130 special attack, and decent physical bulk, it's overall pretty bad and slow. It can be annoyingly bulky and evade some stuff with Snow Cloak if you're in the snow and evil, or Ice Body to heal each turn. We paired that with a new buff to Ice Types which gives 50% more defense in the snow, and it can be a pretty bulky little fellow. But Glaceon did get another buff this generation with its first way to boost its slow speed via Trailblaze. We can then use Alluring Voice to pop a Throat Spray to boost our special attack, and all of a sudden, its special attack is extremely scary. Stab blizzards with no mischance in the snow hit extremely hard, and then we can run freeze dry to catch water types. Glaceon is definitely not good, but with a little speed behind it, it can surprise some people. So I've been on a quest to highlight each of the evolutions, and Glaceon is definitely one of the most neglected competitively. But today we're going to show that bad boy some love. Now if you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Rhyperior. And since I figure it's Flat Boy Friday, we're leading off with the coffee table. Just in case anybody needs a nice level surface to set anything down. So, Rhyperior obviously has the super effective coverage. But I'm just here to set up my stealth rocks and have a good time. So it turns out they're actually going to go ahead and form a boulder and then just punch it right in my face. Rock Wrecker is a pretty intense 150 power stab rock move, but Hisuian Avalug does not care about physical attacks. Just bounces off the guy. And the good news is also this thing has to recharge. So that's going to allow me a nice little turn to go for a Mountain Gale if it connects. So they take that recharge turn. We do land the Mountain Gale, so he throws rocks at me. I throw basically just big ice rocks at the dude and we're doing pretty similar damage to each other. So at this point, I am not in quite Custat Berry range, so I'm like, maybe I can switch back in on potential hazards later and then I can get down uh, to low enough health to where I can pop a Custat Berry and surprise something. So I just decided to switch and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go into the Frosted Mini Weed. It's time to bring in the Obama Snow here. I figure he's not gonna Rock Wrecker twice in a row, which he actually ends up going for the Stone Edge and I can't live because of the nice little buff to Ice types of that 50% defense. Obama Snows is down here taking hits. So, I know that I'm going to be faster. I know that I also threaten this thing, you know, with a Giga Drain. And I might as well just go ahead and get up my Aurora Veil here. So, the snow helps out with Glaceon in terms of its ability. And also, now it's going to be way bulky, especially with that defense boost that comes with the Aurora Veil. So, but he does connect on a second Stone Edge. Guy needs to go buy a damn lottery ticket because he just hit two in a row. And at this point, it's kind of a welcome sacrifice just getting rid of Obama Snow to set up that snow along with the Aurora Veil. Because as I can go into the popsicle wearing boots, I feel like I can easily take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. And then uh, honestly set up against the remaining mons they have, feel pretty good, aka their entire team. So, I decided to go for the Trailblaze. And while that doesn't quite knock this thing out, they actually go for the Hammer Art. Buddy is just slinging hammer. I don't know about that animation. <laughs> It literally gets me every time. So, I do take the hammer arm even with a crit, because I'm behind Aurora Veil, I have that 50% defensive boost being an ice type, and I didn't even Terra. So, that is perfect, and also this thing staying alive kind of works out, because not only was I able to get that Trailblaze, I can then go for that uh, Alluring Voice, which finishes it off, and then pops that Throat Spray. So now I'm sitting at plus one speed, and plus one special attack, and Glaceon is here to do some damage. Also, soaking up a little bit of health with that Ice Body, and Glaceon is... A difficult Pokemon to use offensively. I, it works well as like a more defensive option uh, with like evasion, but ain't nobody got time for that. I just like to make these guys attack stuff. So, as they decide to now go into the other rocky boulder they have, I just can outspeed this thing, obviously. They don't have uh, the ability to live with a sturdy or anything because of that stealth rock. And a blizzard obviously just connects and then sends his ass to the Shadow Realm while I'm just eating up a little bit of snow. On a sunny day, just soaking up some snow, sometimes that is the vibe. So, now they have a revenge switch into whatever they like. They're gonna go into the big ol' hands. And he comes in saying, stop. Glaceon is about to pop off. And I'm gonna try to stop it. So, it is gonna be booster energy. It's gonna get that attack boost. And, uh, honestly, I'm still behind Aurora Veil. But I don't have much health left. And at plus one special attack, depending on how this thing is built, I need all the damage I can get to try to knock out the old thicky boy over here. So, I'm actually just gonna go for the Ice Terra. I considered going for more defensive terrors with this Glaceon, 
But honestly, the extra damage is nice, and going for Terra Ice, I keep the defensive boost. And this thing's here to do a couple things. Or two things, mainly chew some bubblegum and throw some blizzards at fools, and we're all out of bubblegum. So I can now go for the extra boosted blizzard, and it does just take out the Iron Hands. It did get a critical hit. I don't know if it mattered. Obviously, it wasn't a salt vest because we saw the booster energy. And that's just the pure damage we're talking about with those 100% accurate blizzards. So, Aurora Veil does wear off, but it's looking like Glaciani, even just after one Trailblaze, is faster than everything, barring any Choice Scarfs, if it's like an Annihilate with a Scarf in the back. But they decide now, they're like, you know what, the ice has not been good for me. I'm going to bring in the water type, but listen, you still do not enjoy ice, because we're going to go ahead and pop out the Freeze Dry, and uh, look at ice type actually doing stuff. Takes care of the Primarina at plus one special attack. And that is amazing, because without without the freeze-dry coverage, water types just kind of ruin this thing. But uh, we're over here just soaking up some more ice body, and honestly, surprisingly, have been able to get Glaceon to be quite scary. So, they have a few mons left. They're going to go into the Mew, takes a bit of Stealth Rock Chip, so no Focus Sash for you, mister. And I can actually go for another Guaranteed Accurate Blizzard, because the snow is still up, and I think it's only got one more turn left. So, again, with that 130 special attack with Terra Ice, with the plus one special, the Blizzard is doing a lot to pretty much anything. So, the hey, snow does go away. I always almost want to call it hail still, but thank God they made it snow and buffed ice types because they really did need it. So, the final mon is going to be the Annihilate, and this thing comes in looking menacing. But we ain't afraid of no ghosts. All I have to do is connect on a Blizzard without my snow, and honestly, it should be pretty much GG's from here on in Glaceon has absolutely done what no Glaceon has done before. So they're actually going to bust out the Terra Ghost, just assuming potentially I go for the Alluring Voice, but Stab Blizzards just, just does the job anyway. So, as I go for the Blizzard, I miss, and that is the lesson learned. If you do not have Snow up, you're going to have a bad time. So it's able to finish me off with a Drain Punch, and of course, the Glaceon could not collect the body bag, the, the final body bag to really finish it out. So we do lose the Glaceon, but we obviously have some threats in the back, and this team is a little bit goofy in terms of kind of speed tiers and stuff. And honestly, a full health Annihilate is actually, it feels more scary than it, it kind of should be. So what I decided to do, I'm going to go into the Chandelure. I'm like, obviously, my ass is going to get bopped by a Rage Fist. But if I can just get a nice little Shadow Ball, it's just pure ghost at this point. And the bad news is, as I'm staring at this thing, I don't feel like a Shadow Ball kills it from full, which is kind of bad for me. I go ahead and throw the ball at his face. And he does, in fact, live. Does get this Bedef drop that doesn't matter at all, but now I am just met with a nice little ghostly knuckle sandwich to my little chandelier face, and uh, that is going to take care of Luigi's Mansion. So, honestly, this, this thing kind of pulled it to a point where actually I'm like a little bit afraid of this ape because I've just boosted its Rage Fist even further, but it's fine. I have the Q-tip, and if anybody's ears need cleaned, this is the guy for the job. I bring in the Altaria, and all I have to do is just live an attack, hit it with a Moon Blast, and then profit. So it goes for that last Rage Fist. It is going to be a super boosted. It does have a couple hits on him. And uh, luckily, Altaria is the GOAT. We're able to live with 18 HP. And we just throw the moon at his face. And that does take care of it. So honestly, Altaria it came in clutch there. I think this match turned out way closer than it was going to be. But uh, the stars really aligned for Glaceon on that one. And uh, thank God. Because it is not easy to pull off. But we get a nice little, little Glaceon W under our belts. And that's going to bring us into match number two. So I will say this one turns out to be pretty damn interesting. And looking at the squad, he is working with some weather in the form of uh, some sun with the Torkoal. And that is gonna stir up a little bit of the plan here, especially since I'm trying to get some ice shenanigans going. But very scary team, let's go ahead and jump into it. So my dude with the six shades is in fact gonna lead off with the turtle. I kind of have a turtle of my own. I don't, is Avalog? He could pass it. He's like kind of in the turtle club. I don't know. But moral of the story, we look like we'd be homies. A little fire and ice action. And this is not great for me. Obviously, this thing can do a couple different things. I kind of imagine they just lead off with Stealth Rock, and we both have access to Rapid Spin. However, it could just Lava Plume and then do some stuff. And just, Overall, scary. I do know, however, that they probably want to try to conserve the Torkoal, you know, to switch back in and get weather changed when I bring in a bomb of snow, and it's gonna be a little bit of a weather war shenanigans inside the old cafe here. So I decided to just go for the rock blast. I know that I can live an attack guaranteed, and while I am faster, I can uh, at least get some good chip on this thing. And if they want a rapid spin, I'm kind of fine with that. So they are gonna go ahead and spin, and uh, I would love to see a turtle spin rapidly. Why the hell does this thing get access to a move that implies that he's fast? 
I just realized. Anyway, it does a little bit of damage to me, which is annoying because it just breaks my sturdy. And then as I go for the flamethrower, now faster because of the speed boost, I actually live, which is pretty damn clutch for Avalo, not gonna lie. We don't generally take special attacks, especially some stuff that's uh, super effective and then boosted by the sun. So, we do finish them off with the, uh, the next Rock Blast, which is fantastic. Does hit the three times no loaded dice needed, baby. And down goes the Torkoal. So that feels pretty good now they cannot change the weather. And what also feels great is that now Avalug is actually in range for Custap Berry. I'm not at sturdy. However, at the health we're at, I do have one in the chamber and I can pull a fast one on him. I'm going to activate that Custap Berry. Allows me to move faster than normal. And I had a couple different, op different options. I could have gone for the Mountain Gale to do some huge damage to Mascarana if I don't miss. But I decided to opt for the safe option because that shit always ends up missing and the Stealth Rock just kind of seems nice. So I get up the Stealth Rock before we go down and uh, with our Rapid Spinner gone, it is going to stick around. So surprisingly, the Meowskarata is going to be Trailblaze and that's actually quite scary because this thing's fast already, but now it's obviously faster than everything, especially, you know, my Scarf Chandelure. So I do decide to just go into the Obama Snow. I'm like, the sun is burning me out of here. I'm a freaking vampire. And we like, we prefer the, the snow. So the snow's gonna stick around as Torkoal is gone. And I can just go for a nice little blizzard. It's gonna do a lot of damage to whatever they got. And they're actually gonna end up busting out the Terra here. I, the good thing is I know that I can take attacks with a Bomba Snow from a Meowskarata pretty much all day long, depending on what this thing's working with. I don't know exactly what kind of coverage. Especially if it's a Trailblaze guy, he might be working with some crazy nonsense. So they actually end up going for the knockoff here. And look at a Snow absolutely eating up that damage. You really cannot use physical attacks on the guy. So, bad news for me is the steel type now allows him to take the blizzard nicely, but honestly, I'm just fine with people getting their terrors away, like, done with early. It honestly feels like the advantage is on the user who goes for terror second. Does anybody else feel like that? I don't know. But, they're gonna go ahead and you turn on out of here, and they're gonna bring in the Florages. So, this little asshole flower, most of the time, is way more of a problem than you'd expect it to be. As I do set up my Aurora Veil, try to make some, some stuff bulky in the back, I now have the option to basically just try to get some chip you know, on the, the floor just here. It does have the potential to heal with like a synthesis, but with snow up, that's not going to be able to heal as much. And I'm like, I definitely just need some chip on this thing. The, I don't have much in the back for this. And I was at least able to take one Moonblast to get off a nice little blizzard for something before I get down. And it kind of looks like this thing's a salt vest. Uh, but honestly, a lot of the time you never know because this thing is thick as a bowl of damn gravy. And it just takes, but it sponges special attacks like crazy. So, knowing that, I'm like, I'm gonna go into a special attacker. Smite seems like a good idea. I just, <laughs> I don't have any other options, okay? And I'm like, Ampharos, he goes zoom, and then I know I can take attacks. I have a couple turns left, you know, with that Aurora Veil, so I'm gonna try to take advantage of it. And the agility Ampharos is an absolute beast. You should definitely go check out my last uploaded video, because Ampharos is the true goat. So, I go for that agility, doubles the speed, makes me faster than everything they've got. And if I want to do anything other than scratch the forges, I'm going to need this special attack boost that comes, you know, with the Meteor Beam. So, I go for that Meteor Beam. Obviously, turn one gives me that special attack boost. Turn, yeah, it's, I guess, same turn with the Power Herb allows it to activate. And it does a nice little bit of damage to the guy to where I'm like, hey, maybe a Stab Thunderbolt now with the special attack boost kills it. Regardless, I, I'm taking Moon Blast all day long up until the Auroraville goes away, which it does now, which kind of sucks. But then I'm like, I'm just going to zap his ass with a T-Bolt and then go on my merry way. Except... This is the exact problem with Florges. This thing is so annoying. And it does barely hang on. And even more annoyingly, gets the special attack drop, which really sucks. Because listen, Ampharos worked hard to get that Meteor Beam off. And now it's wasted. Because honestly, with the in agility, we're looking pretty good on a lot of their squad. So at least I am able to take care of the Florges. And now they can switch into whatever they like. They're going to go into the Meowskarata, however. And while I'm not at plus one special attack, I am still faster than this thing with an agility, so I'm like, this is fine. I go for the T-Bolt. No special boost needed, baby. That thing is just going to go ahead and take a nice little dirt nap. It is going to take care of the Meowskarata, and that is one fast weed kitty out of the way. So, Ampharos is like, bring it on. I can handle basically whatever you got here, except for this little Power Ranger-ass bug boy. It, it brings in the... I honestly kind of expected them to go into this earlier. Maybe they thought the Meowskarata was just faster than uh, Ampharos even after an agility. But of course, the first impression does take care of me, but not without, without a little, little parting gift. We do get the static to get the para on the bug, and that's actually really nice. Low kicks being paralyzed here gives me a bit more momentum than I generally would have. Obviously, these things come in and they just first impression a lot of the time with priority anyway. 
But it's looking like Glaceon has a chance here. It, problem is I do need a little bit of snow. So what I decide to do first is bring in the Galarian Slowking. I do this because I'm like, maybe they switch out and then I can get some momentum with a chilly reception. But they do just stay in and uh, they're going to get fully paired. I kind of wasn't sure if this thing was going to be choice banned or not. A lot of the time they are. So the chilly reception there was, you know, both for the fact of scouting out what they want to do on that play. Then also setting up the snow for our little frosty popsicle fella. So... Now I can just pivot right into the Glaceon without having to worry about taking an attack. And it comes down to now trying to see if we can get the all-terrain Glaceon to do some stuff. The problem with this set is that A, it's not very good. And B, it takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot to get it going. But at least I do have the coverage with a, uh, a nice little alluring voice. And it finishes off the low kicks. Not only that, but now it's going to give me that special attack boost, which is great. But looking at it, I was like, I kind of, pr I probably should have gone for a Trailblaze first. Um, but I opted just for that special damage there. Because looking at the remainder of their squad, I kind of felt like they were going to go into Toxapex here. This thing plays Peekaboo with you and then taunts you because it doesn't seem like you can touch it. But then people forget that I can just freeze dry your ass. Like some of that candy they have on TikTok and they're always trying to sell. But regardless, this urchin is going to have a bad time. I do decide to go for the Terra Ice. Just because I might as well bust out the Terra just to ensure that this at least yeah, grabs the KO depending on what this thing is working with. And uh, honestly, a freeze-dried urchin seems seems brittle. I do bust it out, and obviously this thing is going to have a bad time. Absolutely just obliterates the man's health bar. And that's great. You love to see Toxapex not being as annoying as usual. And uh, I even get a little bit more health back with that Ice Body. Honestly, Ice Body's basically worthless, but... Sometimes it can make the difference and be kind of cool. So, the problem is that the freaking horse is here. And uh, this thing is basically the most overpowered damn thing in the world right now. And so, we have a problem. I do not have the speed to be able to outspeed this. And uh, that's going to suck. It goes for the Astral Barrage. Buddy is literally riding a horse. And he's fast as hell. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. But Astral Barrage does take care of me. And uh, Broken Horse is going to do Broken Horse things. And, Killing Glaceon is like the most sad thing you could possibly do. Honestly, disrespectful. It also, icing on the cake gets the damn Grim Nay, which is annoying. But here's the thing. I have a chandelier that's the right fella for the job. Because with the Choice Scarf, this chandelier is fast as fuck, boy. And I'm like, hey, yo, a, a horse. Go ahead and uh, catch this. I go for the Shadow Ball. We do outspeed. And the horse makes a pretty shitty catch. Catches it right to the face. And that is going to end up knocking this thing out. And with that, it is going to be the end of the game. So thank God this Scarf Chandelier was there because then I didn't have any other option. But that's going to do it for game number two. And I thought that was just kind of uh, an interesting one. So that is going to now bring us into game number three. And with that, if you've made it this far into the video, you should probably go ahead and hit that like button because it helps out the channel. YouTube likes it and I appreciate it. So this time we have a different weather to deal with. And it's going to come in the form of some rain. With the Pelipper, they also have the Archaladon. And there's going to be a whole bunch of nonsense here. Quite the scary squad. But let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, my dude is going to go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. And you already know I got the Avalug. This thing is just, it's a pretty reliable lead. It at least guarantees that I have my Sturdy. And then no one expects the Custap Berry. So, turns out this thing is going to turn one. Just go ahead and throw some balls at me. And honestly, without even taking me to dinner first, knocks me down to Sturdy. And that shit hurt it. It also gets the spadef drop just with the icing on the cake. However, I do set up my stealth rock. And honestly, it's a risky maneuver against this thing. Just because obviously it has access to that mortal spin. And I'm like, well, I probably should have done that. At least, however, I can activate the cust app. Surprise, bitch. And go ahead and get a nice little mountain gale. Knock this thing down uh, to at least uh, a pretty good amount of chips. And it does do a bunch. And also is going to sprinkle some toxic spikes. I'm not super worried about the toxic spikes. Just because I do have the Poison Boy, the Galarian Slow King in the back. And they are just going to go ahead and mortal spin. So while I do get some chip on the Glamora, my stealth rocks are gone. And I worked... I can't believe you would... I can't believe you've done this. So the rocks go away. However, now I can switch into whatever I like. And I'm just going to bring in the Galarian Slow King. I'm going to soak up the toxic spikes. And then also I don't have to worry about hitting this thing on the physical side. I'm going to set more of those up. So we just go ahead and soak them up. I feel like poison types should get some type of boost. If they come in on Toxic Spikes. Game Freak, I beg you, please hire me. I got shitty ideas. Anyway, they're not going to set up the Stealth Rock. And I kind of expected them to switch out, but I do go for the Future Sight. Just because sometimes Future Sight, people be forgetting about that. And then it just it, it stirs some stuff up a bit. Obviously, if Glamora now stays in, 
gonna have an interesting time. And I kind of expect the switch out. I'm gonna go for the Thunder Wave, and uh, they're like, nope, I'm just gonna I'm gonna set these toxic spikes here. Do you mind if I place these here? It turns out I do mind because that's rude, honestly. But I now go for the Thunder Wave, and I'm like, Jesus, I probably should just have Psychic on this thing because that would have saved me at least a turn. However, I do get the para. I imagine maybe they switch out here, and that's why Galarian Sloking has such good synergy with its moveset. It can basically, it can Thunder Wave stuff, it can set up a future site, and then upon switching out, uh, them potentially going into like a dark type, I can just switch my ass out, see what they go into, but they actually just stay in, as I just tell a nice bad joke. I don't know, what is it about Sloking that he gets access to, he's the only one that gets chilly reception. Is this thing just, is this guy just horrible at jokes? I don't understand. But I like it though, because it has great synergy on the squad. So, as I set up the snow, I'm thinking, who should I go into here? I decide to go into the Obama Snow. The bad thing is, obviously I'm going to get poisoned. Good thing is, Obama Snow doesn't really give a shit that much. He's kind of just on this team to like set up some snow and then maybe get an Aurora Veil off most of the time. Uh, but also, now the future side attack is just going to come through. So, But he does just let the Glamora go down. And now all I have to do is just make sure I go back into Glow King to get, up those, or get rid of those Toxic Spikes. And now they uh, can just bring in whatever they want against the Obama Snow. So this team functions kind of interestingly with like the two sweeper options. Obviously, I have the Ampharos along with the Glaceon and just kind of seeing what they want to do with it. So they obviously go Pelipper just because obviously they want to play the game of weather. And fun fact, I accidentally clicked Auroraville there. It would not have worked had I lived this hurricane. I kind of expected them to... Here was the thought process. They would like U-turn expecting me to switch and then something would take a blizzard, but I clicked Aurora Veil anyway, and Mini Wheat was just meant to die there, so... That is my bad, however, at least now I can go into the Galarian Sloking, which I probably should have switched into, because now I can get rid of the spikes, and also, I can take attacks from this thing quite literally all day. So, I do have basically every option here. I can get some chip with a Sludge Bomb, I can go for a Future Sight for later, um, but I do decide, as I can... I'm basically fully specially defensive on this set, so I'm just gonna go for... Another chilly reception is uh, they do stay in. Kind of thought maybe they would U-turn. It would be nice just because I would see what they U-turn into. And then I can just pivot. But uh, at least I'm able to get rid of the rain, which is going to make it a lot harder for them to land hurricanes. And then maybe try to get something going here. It's looking... It's a bit tough out here. I'm not going to lie. But Popsicle is here. And whenever, whenever the Glaceon is around, people quiver in fear. And also, I get that ice body, which I'm like, yeah, you like that? You see that sweet amount of health I just got back? Yeah, you love to see it. So here's the thing. They can obviously roll to land a hurricane, and uh, I'm willing to make that risk. I'm going to go for the alluring voice. Turns out I am faster, which is good. And uh, I get that alluring voice off. Not going to do a whole bunch of damage, but it does at least get my throat spray. It is in range for a blizzard to kill, and they do connect on a hurricane. It was really kind of rolling for them to miss that hurricane, but Glaceon is not only bulky on the physically physical side. I do at least live that hurricane, which is great. And now I'm like, damn, I really do kind of need the Trailblaze, but I cannot really risk it. If I go for the Trailblaze and then they just knock me out, I kind of have a bad time. So I am just going to go for the Freeze Dry here just to guarantee the Pelipper goes down if they stay in. But they're actually going to switch into the Archaladon. Now, this is the guy that enjoys the rain being able to get up uh, Electro Shots in one turn. Uh, but the Freeze Dry actually does a nice little bit of chip there, gives them some stamina, except uh, we, we be hating architecture around here. And I'm like, how? Can I possibly ruin this staple remover's day? And that is going to be via going for some blizzard action, and you already know we're going to bust back out the Terra Ice. It's a Terra Ice kind of day. Meanwhile, I'm recording this, it's like 100 degrees outside, uh, but it's ice cold out here when Glaceon's fucking around with the, the snowflake on his head. Looking ridiculous. I mean, actually kind of looking, kind of looking sweet. I don't know. I go for the now extra boosted blizzard, just based off of that damage we saw from the freeze dry, that is going to be able to take care of it. And uh, our Jaladon just takes a nice little seat. And uh, we do not have the plus one speed boost, however, which is unfortunate. But the ice body's slowly starting to stack up, which is fun. You know what's not fun? The toilet birds coming in and ruining my weather time. The Pelipper comes in, sets up that drizzle once again. And the problem is, I'm not fast enough to deal with this. I know that I die from a hurricane, and I'm like, potentially, I could save the Glaceon for later. So, I decide it's in my best interest to kind of switch out here. I doubt I'm going to be able to set that Glaceon up, but it's possible, and we remain hopeful. So, I go into the Glow King just because I know, again, I can take special attacks all damn day long. I, even after a hurricane, I can switch out and just be right back to full. Uh, but I do get confused, of course, from the hurricane. It's a friggin' yeah, confusing-ass hurricane, I suppose. But they connect on another one, of course, 
Okay, we're taking them all day long out here. I do really want to break through this confusion, however, just so that I can get a T-Wave off on this thing, uh, because at least it'd be a whole lot easier to deal with. And trying to manage health on the Galarian Sloking is a little bit of an interesting task, knowing that I switch out and get a nice little chunk back with that Regenerator. I'm like, you know what? I could either go for the Chili Reception or try to opt for the Parahax, and it does not happen. It breaks through. And of course, while the ducks are still floating around, I do at least break through and I'm able to get a future side off. Now, in hindsight, I really at this point, we have an interesting matchup, right? They obviously need the rain synergy because they do have the Basque Legion in the back. And I was really hoping for a Parahax on this turn to be able to go for the Chili Reception. It was just, it's a risky play just because they could then switch back out Pelipper, make it rain once again. And the moral of the story is the rain is really helping out their kind of win condition being the Basque Legion. So I'm like, if maybe I can run them out of turns. And at least for now, I can bring in the Popsicle, at least live from the Stealth Rock. And this thing is, they really are kind of checkmated here. They can't switch out super easily. So I can go for the freeze dry. And it's like, ha, huh, I'm faster now, Mr. Bird. So the freeze dry does take care of it. And now they are down to three Pokemon left. So here's the breakdown. They have the Basque Legion, of course. They have a Garganacle along with an Indeedee in the back. And uh, I do have the possibility to take attacks from Basque Legion with things like the Ampharos, at least if the rain is gone. But as it comes in, Buddy is swimming in a swift fashion, and this thing is quite scary. So, looking at it here, there's not really much of a reason for me to save the Glaceon other than for something like the Garg. But of course, I can't come back in on Stealth Rock anyway, so it does reveal that it's going to be Aqua Jet. And at least I get a little bit of intel from that. It tells me that it's not going to be like a Choice Band set. At least most of the time they're not running Aqua Jet on a, on a band set, so I'm kind of led to believe that. And as I cannot go into the Chandelure here, I kind of am forced to go into the Ampharo. So, I definitely know that I can take one attack from this thing if it's going to be an Aqua Jet, and I'm like, hold on, is the Ampharo going to pull it around for us? I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt, just because it's going to get, obviously, enough to kill the Bat Legion, but also it does the best damage I can get on anything else. And uh, they're going to switch into the Guard... And this fella is looking pretty ready to take special attacks. I get a little bit of a chunk with that Thunderbolt, but now as I'm looking at it, I'm like, maybe, just maybe, Ampharos has a way to clutch this one out, as I'm just going to go for another Thunderbolt. I can't really risk going for an Agility if they want to have, like, Earthquake or something like that. But as I get a nice little crit, put it in range for one more to kill, they actually go for the Salt Cure, which is kind of good for me, as it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. The rain goes away, and I'm like, there is kind of a chance if i was able to get up an agility here i know that i could outspeed everything they have in the back problem becomes then i'm gonna be in range from an aqua jet from the basque Le legion and priority kind of shits on my parade so i decided to just go for the meteor beam here it's gonna help me for damage against the indeedy and uh i know that i can just easily finish off the garg so there's no reason not to just grab a nice little special attack boost to go and that takes care of the garganaco so we got a little 2v2 action here they have this i have the chandelier and they have now an Ndidi along with that Basque Legion. So, Salt Cure obviously does its annoying thing. And being at around half, I know that uh, I can maybe take an attack, depending on what they're working with. And they're going to bring in the Ndidi that's got the sad ears. He's got the, he's got the upside down-ass croissants. And uh, the Psychic Surge does set in. So here's the thing. Psychic Surge kind of changes the game for me a little bit. They can now no longer go for a priority Aqua Jet. And I'm like, oh shit, that actually makes things kind of crazy here as they go for a psychic on that psychic terrain it is going to be able to kill and uh even at that plus one special attack and dd is just too damn thick and it does at least live that style with thunderbolt so now it is up to chandelure and chandelure only to try to clutch it out for it so i do have a little bit of a plan here obviously i cannot go for a shadow ball on this thing which really kind of kind of breaks my balls a shadow ball here would kind of lock up the win right but i am forced to basically go for the energy ball and it's a good thing I got all sorts of balls out here. So, the energy ball, it does not end up being enough to kill the Ndidi. It literally lived on 1 HP and then just offed itself. So this thing took a little toaster bath. Healing Wish is annoying, but uh, now it's a little 1v1 action. As Basque Legion comes in, the Healing Wish doesn't really matter. And now, I, being Choice Scarf, I know that I can outspeed here. And if Energy Ball has enough, we can get the dub. I go for that Energy Ball and it just barely hangs on. It lives, which is now basically puts my ass in danger because the last respects does take care of the chandelier and that was a crazy end game had i known they were gonna click uh healing wish i could have gone for shadow ball and then would have been able to win the game but i mean there was no there was no predicting that to happen so that's gonna be the end of that one honestly super crazy ending and today i got a little extra treat for you fellas because i do in fact have one more game 
Just because, hey, why not? If, you're, if you guys are gonna watch them, I'm gonna be out here making them. If you do, if you do enjoy these longer videos, definitely let me know because uh, I've been trying, trying my best to get as many in here as possible. So, with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time, something I didn't really expect. They're actually gonna end up leading off with the mouse hold, and I, what, I bet what you did not expect was me to lead off with the Hisuian Avalug. It's like, it, this thing is the dedicated lead, he's doing his damn job. So, the mouse hold is gonna go for the tidy up turn one. Obviously there's nothing to quite tidy up there, but at least now there's no dust on the damn battlefield, and that now gives it the uh, little, little, little boost to try to get some shit going. So, rather than going for the Stealth Rock, I decided to go for the Mountain Gale, throwing around curveballs, bet you didn't expect it, and I kinda just thought that this mouse hold was gonna try to set up like that, and uh, Avalug kinda handles it. So, they now decide to switch out, they're just like, yeah, that boost is just gonna go ahead and get you poof out of there. So, I go for the Rock Blast, not exactly sure what they want to switch into, but just stirring the pot a little bit, but Okie Dogie comes in, and uh, I should've just gone for a Mountain Gale. I'm afraid to click Mountain Gale because it just feels like it's gonna miss all the time, but obviously Okie Dogie with his tongue out just taunting me over there is kind of... Kind of bad news, because it does turn out to be a bulk up set, and this is gonna make freaking Booger Bear over here a little scary. As I'm just setting up Stealth Rock, and I'm like, I am in danger. This thing is gonna definitely be a little bit of a threat. Obviously, I cannot really do too much chip now with the Mountain Gale, and while I do still have my Sturdy intact, again, I can't really, I can't get too much damage here. So this time I'm like, you know what, I'm feeling a little dangerous. Surely they're not gonna go for a knockoff, if anything, potentially a drain punch, or they just bulk up again. So I decide to just hard swap right into the chandelier, because I'm like, if I can just bop this thing with a special attack, I can at least get some, uh, if not kill, just get some really good damage. So they do go for the second bulk up, and homie is trying to set up on me out here, and uh, it's looking kind of scary. So this thing is at plus two attack and defense. Luckily, I am faster with this thing, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go for the big ol' overheat nuke. I can maybe grab a kill here, depending, do a little spin a -roo, and it does live on like 20 HP. So, I now get this special attack drop, and then just get crunched right to my eminent death. And, uh, I did at least put this thing into range where now I don't have to be super worried about it. So, Chandler going down does kinda suck in hindsight, but in general, I just needed to just hit that thing with a hard special attack. So, I now decide to go into the Galarian Slow King, because as I'm looking at it, this Okie Dogie honestly kind of has me in a really bad spot. And it turns out one of my best options, at least I feel like, is to go into the Glow King here, and I kind of need to bust out the Terra. Obviously, it's a bold move, switching this thing into a plus two super effective crunch, which is going to kill me. So I can at least now go for the Terra Water. It's going to make it so it's a nice little neutral hit. And with the fountain on my head, we're looking goofy as hell. So, I know that uh, as they go for the crunch, I should be able to live. And it does just a little over half, which is fine, but does allow me to, thank God, not miss a Thunder Wave. So with this thing slower than basically everything I have left now, it should be a whole lot easier to deal with. And that's one of the problems with this team, I'm not working with a whole lot of speed. But uh, who needs speed when you have a Glaceon, am I right? So. Now as I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, potentially the Glaceon in the back, maybe could get some shit going. They're gonna finish me off with a Drain Punch, however, because you are he's still faster, even paralyzed. And the Drain Punch really kind of blows because it actually gets a whole bunch of health back. And could I just please get a full para just one of these times? I, I go out of my way to be throwing waves of thunder around, and for what? To not be rewarded, damn it. So even after some Black Sledge recovery, this thing's looking way too damn healthy. For my liking so i'm thinking to myself you know what mini wheat it may not be breakfast time but it's always time to bring this fella out especially when you're on the beach right here just melting in the damn heat but i make it snow and then i'm looking at it i'm like i can just now go for a blizzard as uh that's surely gonna be able to grab a kill since i'm faster now so that does take care of okie dogie and that is sweeper threat out of the damn way now they do in fact have just threat after threat because now we have to deal with an annihilate and as i'm looking at this little fella he looks pissed off which is kind of bad news for me and i'm also feeling like this is another guy that has the option to <laughs> try to set up on me uh, and i'm just gonna go right for the blizzard i'm feeling like no matter what i can get some pretty good damage you know with a nice little stab blizzard and he's actually gonna end up busting out the terra fighting so for whatever reason wants to get that extra fighting stab i guess with me being you know under some 50 percent defense boost but they actually go for another bulk up literally everything out here is setting up on me and it comes down to a point where people are like they can find any opening and then like one setup and i'm in trouble i actually ended up clicking aurora veil i take that back i did not blizzard i repeat the aurora veil is up so that's actually good news for me because now right, with that extra little added bulk Maybe I can take an attack, and he's like, I'm gonna get some extra bulk myself. Buddy is hitting the gym, 
so hard he's got you got a fist growing out of his damn forehead and i swear to god this guy is going set up crazy so i go for the blizzard knowing it's going to do over half and then we get a nice little treat i actually end up getting the freeze and now he's looking like a ridiculous freaking annihilate popsicle over there and also does not thaw out on turn one it feels like when you're frozen, if you don't thaw out on the first turn, you just don't thaw out. And now, the second blizzard kills it, and so I'm just out here dodging setups like it's my damn job out here. So, Ape goes down, and we do still have the Aurora Veil up, which is pretty nice. So, as they go into Glamora, I'm like, thank Christ this thing can't actually set up on me, because at least I don't think it can. I'm starting to question myself at this point. They go for the Mortal Spin. And we now have poison in the damn cereal, which is a party foul. Also, it's going to get rid of my stealth rock, which is in fact another foul. But at least that's fine, because uh, I do have a nice little hard-hitting blizzard to hit the guy with, and it does actually yeah, live, which is annoying. So, this Obama Snow is kind of a weird dynamic. I wish Buddy could hold two items, because as now, I'm holding the Icy Rock just to keep up the snow for longer. But a lot of the time, this thing just never ends up dying. And as I have up the Aurora Veil, I even take the stab power gem nicely, and then it just always ends up being like Obama Snow just uses up the, the freaking Aurora Veil on himself, when the roll is kind of supposed to be to be able to use it on like Glaceon, but it's fine because we take care of the Glamora, and we take a little bit of Poison Chip, and now the Aurora Veil does go away. So, they are now going to bring back in the little family of mice who does have the ability to switch in now because of that Stealth Rock being gone, so that Mortal Play was a, a good switch in. But this thing doesn't really have the possibility to go for the tidy up, which is fantastic. It can, however, throw his damn babies at my face, and it's kind of funny to see how little damage each one does, especially with that defense boost. So it does end up taking me out with a losing a couple, but uh, he's still got five in the chamber. This thing can just pop the kids out, no problem. So it is finally time. I'm going to bring in the popsicle, and as I'm looking at him, like I have the benefit of being defensive. This thing cannot really set up here, and even a 10 hit population bomb. I can't take because Glaceon is damn defensive in the snow. So they do go for that Population Bomb. Here's your fun fact of the day. Population Bomb is classified as a slicing move. It works for the ability Sharpness. And I don't know what the hell that's all about. But it actually only gets the five hits. And then I finish it off with that Trailblaze. Which is great because now I'm actually fast enough to be able to do some stuff. I feel like Glaceon looks like he'd be... Or she would be a fast Pokemon, right? No. Wrong. Slow as hell. So... They decide to bring in the Espathra, and they are down to two Pokemon left. I actually end up outspeeding. Tells me this thing is, what, what for whatever reason, not max speed. And as it actually ends up having a Citrus Berry, got to be more of like a bulky variant. And uh, they actually end up setting up the Calm Mind. So, this thing is now sitting at the plus one special defense. However, I'm like, okay, it's going to get a speed boost, and then it's going to be faster, and then I'm screwed. But it's actually not going to be speed boost. Maybe it's... That means it has to be opportunist or something like that. This Espathra is weird as hell. Regardless, we give him the roar, and a Blizzard does take care of it. He does not care how much special defense you got. Blizzard connects and clutches it out, so that's pretty damn solid. So the final Pokemon is going to be this damn Gyarados. And it does come in without taking Stealth Rock Chip, which is scary, but I'm not quite worried because I can just go ahead and freeze-dry this shrimp. And uh, it actually ends up living with a Focus Sash. So the Rapid or the Mortal Spin to get rid of the rocks. Ended up being a real nice play because now it's able to live and then set up the Dragon Dance, which is going to allow this thing to be faster than the Glaceon and honestly be kind of a scary threat. And as I'm looking up at this thing like I am in danger, I uh, also don't have any more snow up. So this thing actually ends up going for the Earthquake. I don't know if Homie was expecting a switch or what, or just to, to flat out kill. I kind of expected it to kill. I do in fact live, and one more freeze dry takes care of the Gyarados. And that game was just ended up being goofy as hell, but I wanted to toss... You know, one more here at the end for you guys. And uh, just having just having a good time with it, just messing around. And that is going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, you truly are the GOAT. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.